The situation remains tense, but somewhat stable in uh, northeast Syria, almost a week after Turkey moved to secure what is traditionally Kurdish territory. Russian units have reportedly moved into place along the Euphrates as a buffer between Syrian government forces and the Turkish military. The situation currently leaves about 2 million Kurds in limbo. Uh, the Kurds have traditionally quarreled with the Turks while maintaining a level of autonomy under the Syrian government of Bashar al-Assad, especially in recent years during the fight against ISIS. And that's why this gets so complicated. The situation, to put it briefly, is what we like to often call a quagmire, a tangled mess. And now the United States has slapped sanctions on Turkey, including a 50 percent tariff on steel and a, I guess, a halt to trade negotiations as well. So let, let's try a, a, and get a better understanding of this. Let's go to uh, former Naval Intelligence Officer John Jordan, who is uh, one of our favorite guests when it comes to this. He's, he's in fact, you know what, uh, under, you could, I don't know if you could see his title, but it says Quagmire Expert, <laughs> John Jordan. <laughs> Expert in quagmires. You he's have got, no idea, Rick. He's got a degree in you quagmires. You have no idea <laughs> my personal life. Uh, exactly. I think we can speak for all of us. Hey, let me start you with this. Do you believe that Mr. Trump did what he did with the sanctions because of the enormous pressure that he seemed to be getting from the left and also very much so from the right, the Lindsey Grahams of the world? Well, President Trump uh, really failed to communicate to President Erdogan the limits of American tolerance and where the, the what we would tolerate with regard to Turkish incursions into Kurdish areas and how much uh, how many casualties we would be willing to uh, you know absorb uh, quietly. That should have been made very clear to Erdogan early on. So the president was playing catch up in terms of imposing these sanctions after the fact. Had he laid down the law sooner, uh, probably some of this bloodshed could have been avoided. Yeah, but you know I got to tell you, I, I know the Republicans are screaming bloody hell, and so are the Democrats, and so is the media all of a sudden, who in the past could give a crap about Syria, but all of a sudden CNN is all Syria all the time. Um, as far as I, I, as far as I can tell, I think there's seven to ten people who've died. Seven to ten. We got mass murderers in this country who kill ten times that many in a half hour. I, 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 where's the bloodbath? Yeah, I don't see a bloodbath. Uh, in inner cities, uh, in inner cities, this country are far bloodier so far. I would agree with that. Basically, the president was confronted with a choice: either you leave those 50 soldiers in the contested zones as basically as human shields. I mean, who wants to explain that to mothers and fathers? I mean, that's not reasonable. Or to or to insert tens of thousands of troops if you really want to be a player in Syria in the Syrian civil war and its aftermath. So the president decided basically, you know, uh, let the parties that have a, a dog in the fight, the Russians, the Syrian government, the Turks and the Kurds, let them sort it out. There's no vital uh, U.S. interest at stake here. It seems to me, too, uh, I've been watching the coverage on this, and it's funny you just said the Russians, because all of a sudden I'm seeing everyone who's very concerned because it looks like the Russian forces are the ones who are now uh, being the referees or the peacekeepers or whatever the experts call them in a situation like this. Why does that make everybody so mad? What's the difference who's trying to be the referee as long as there is a referee, right? It shouldn't make anybody mad. Syria is a long-time long uh, Russian client state. Russia has a naval base at Tartus, which is very important to Russia. Um, the Russians have a, a, are playing a very positive role here. They're supportive of the Assad regime, and they're keeping the Turks and the Kurds separated. And ultimately, it's going to be interesting to see if Russia is on a collision course with Erdogan now. I mean, the, the, the deck has been completely reshuffled. Before the Turks and the Russians were, were palsy wellsy that may or may not last. And then last Lastly, you know, the Iranians, I mean, do the, do the, what role do the Iranians play and what role will the Russians and the Syria and the, and the Assad government allow Iran to play? Yeah, it really does kind of mess up the apple cart, as we like to say here in America. But I, I'm not necessarily sure it's a bad thing. You say what? I would agree. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. America had no compelling national security interests there. There are regional players there that all have a dog in the fight. So basically, I mean, is the U.S. going to insert, you know, 50 or 100,000 troops to affect a political outcome and then stay there for a decade? I, I don't think so. President Trump has decided to let this be resolved by the parties that, that really have a, a dog in the fight. And the U.S. can always go back in with sanctions or airstrikes if U.S. national security was ever jeopardized. Brilliant analysis on your part, uh, John. But I want to ask you one more thing. This dude, Erdogan, 
I find this guy fascinating. I mean, all of a sudden, this guy's on the world stage with the U.S. president and the president of uh, Russia and just about everybody else out there. What do you make of this dude? Well, he's a consummate politician. You know, he's got some struggles at home, you know, with the Turkish economy being as weak as it is. Uh, he's still an ally of the United States, still, in, still a member of NATO, but building bridges with Russia and other players in the region and is going to grow Turkey's influence, certainly in Syria and possibly beyond. John Jordan, nobody like him. We thank you, Mr. Quagmire analyst expert. <laughs> So you haven't heard that we're the ones covering the stories that you won't see covered anywhere else? In Venezuela, Kazakhstan, let's go to Hong Kong. And the media reaction to that has been crickets. How about the way we cover those stories? What the hell does that mean? Wally, Wally, Wally. That's the key word in this case, uprising. Keep, can you believe that? Watching. This is the right thing for members of the media to do, to actually pick sides. Look, if you like what you see, subscribe.